This is a revision video looking at the GCSE chemistry topic of diamond, graphite, graphene and fullerenes. This comes up in unit 2 which is the structure and bonding topic in paper 1 of AQA GCSE chemistry and combined science. In this video we'll describe the structure of diamond, graphite and graphene and use this to explain the physical properties of diamond and graphite. We'll explain what we mean by fullerenes, including nanotubes, and then name the first example of a fullerene and give three uses of nanotubes. When certain non-metallic elements bond, they can form giant covalent structures involving thousands of atoms. These structures, sometimes called macromolecules, include examples like diamond, graphite and silica, and they're characterised by being solids at room temperature with very high melting points. One example of a giant covalent structure, or a macromolecule, is diamond. Diamond is made out of carbon atoms, and each one of those carbon atoms is capable of forming four strong covalent bonds. Because these bonds require a huge amount of energy to overcome, this means that diamond has a very, very high melting point. Because the strong covalent bonds prevent the atoms from moving apart from each other, it also makes diamond incredibly hard. Diamond doesn't have any free charged particles, it doesn't have any delocalised electrons or any ions, and therefore because it's uncharged, it's unable to conduct electricity. You'll see a lot of exam questions which ask you to directly compare diamond and graphite, and the reason for this is that they're both made from carbon, and so you might be tempted to think that they would be quite similar, but actually they have a lot of differences. One similarity is that they do both have high melting points, because in graphite there are also thousands of strong covalent bonds, but these are arranged in a slightly different way to diamond, and this affects the rest of the properties. In graphite, each atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms rather than four. As you can see in this diagram, they form hexagonal sheets. One sheet is separate from the sheet underneath it. There isn't a covalent bond between the sheets, and so they're able to move over each other. Also, because each atom is only making three strong covalent bonds instead of four, that leaves one electron spare. These delocalised electrons are able to move through the entire substance. They're not tied to one particular atom. And this means that graphite is incredibly rare as a non-metal in that it can conduct electricity. Also, because there's only a weak force between the sheets, rather than strong covalent bonds, they're able to slide over each other. And this makes graphite soft and slippery. This makes it really useful for use as a lubricant. If you take a piece of graphite and you use adhesive tape to remove just one of the layers, then what you're left with is a substance called graphene. Graphene is a single layer of graphite, and for a long time it was touted as a wonder material. It's very useful in electronics, because it still has delocalised electrons, just like graphite, and therefore it conducts electricity, but because it's just in a single layer, it's possible to bend it, and so it has real prospects for use in wearable electronics. It's also used in composite materials. Unfortunately, it hasn't yet been widely utilised because it's quite fragile and it's very difficult to make a large enough piece of graphene to use it for any practical purposes. Carbon can also exist in the form of fullerenes, a really interesting class of molecules with hollow shapes, so they're often cages or long tubes or balls, and these tend to be based around a hexagonal structure, although you do also see rings of five or seven carbon atoms. The first one of these to be discovered was named Buckminster Fullerene, after an architect who designed buildings that looked a lot like the molecules. Buckminster Fullerene contains 60 carbon atoms, so it's often also called C60. Another group of fullerenes are the nanotubes. Nanotubes are only about one nanometer across, but they can be quite long on a macro scale, so they have very high length to diameter ratios, and they are incredibly strong. They're also really useful for lots of other things. They can be used in medicine to sort of um, transport particular drugs to a certain part of the body. They conduct electricity really well because they're fundamentally the same as graphene, just rolled into a tube. And also they can be used for structural purposes like strengthening tennis rackets. Thank you very much for watching. If you did find that useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.